Hey guys, this is going to be a compilation video of taking this bullet riddled 1970 GTO from scrap metal to a running driving burnout machine. It's going to sum up the 22 episodes I've got on it thus far of the entire build. If you want to see them more in depth, go back and take a look at them. For you new guys, and for you guys who just want to reminisce, this is just going to kind of sum up the whole build. So uh, watch, enjoy, and let me know what you think. We're leaving at 7.53 at night to drive to Big Spring, Texas to pick up a little special something. I'm a moron. My God. <laughs> Looks like we got a cactus. This is just what I thought. And uh, I can proudly say that this is the worst 1970 GTO on the face of the planet. So you're gonna see this guy down the road. And we got a free cat. As you can see, it needs light body work, light interior work, light mechanical, it needs everything. But that's okay, because we can do that. And we are going to save this car, and I use save as a very, very, very relative term. I don't think that there's a lot of saving this here automobile. What we need to do with this is get her to run, drive, stop sometimes, and do large burnouts. Yeah, mostly just fix it because everybody said I can't. Now, a little history on this. I was driving back from the duct tape drags in Arizona, and I was in the middle of New Mexico, just north of Las Vegas, New Mexico. I saw on Instagram that Steve Maniate of D Junkyard Gold had made a post about this bullet riddled GTO. Scroll through the uh, description and it was part of the Great Mopar Horde auction in Western Texas, Big Spring, Texas. I said, well, that'd be kind of funny. You know, I'll throw a bid on it. The bid was at like $7. And I'm like, all right, you know, let's uh, throw a bid on it, say 200 bucks. So I put 200 bucks as my max bid then lo and behold, two weeks later, I'm sitting in my hotel room in Detroit, Michigan. I get a notification on my phone that says, Congratulations! You have won 1970 Pontiac GTO! And I'm like, what are you talking about? Clicked in my brain that I bought a 70 Pontiac GTO. But probably the coolest thing, look at that, still got the Texas desert dust in it, was these license plates. And... I think that's 1976. So the old boys that had this down there, the old boy died and his brother was auctioning off everything. They used this for target practice since like the late 70s, early 80s. And uh, they were Chrysler guys, Mopar guys. They thought it was a Le Mans. And you could see that the original color was blue. This door's definitely been changed. The driver's door has been changed. This is a red or maroon door. And this fender has been changed. This is a red or maroon fender. So, needless to say, even before it got used for target practice for the last, you know, four decades, uh, they've had a rough life. Whoa, don't dent it. Dude, don't dent it. Oh. <laughs> I got, like, worried. <laughs> 
Wow, that shuts really nice. We're gonna pump this roof back out. Make it in the general shape of an automobile again. Because false hope is still hope. Dude, you're gonna flood it. Wow. I don't even know why I did that. Why did I do that? Now I have to get it to shut. That frame is so clean. Especially where they all rot out down here. I will finish this. And you'll see it right here. I do what I say I'm gonna do. I promise you, I give you my word right now that this car will run and drive in a matter of months. And if we're lucky, someone will pay attention and we can go troll some car shows or something. I mean, enter some car shows with this pristine example of Pontiac engineering. I think today, I'm gonna try to get this motor out. See that liquid coming out, dripping? It's not oil, it's water. I do know that if the bottom of your dipstick is actually rotted off, that that is a, that's some concern there. Uh, we'll hook the tensile strength tester to it. Really curious to see this thing has bullet holes in it. It seems to have escaped getting shot. We're gonna have to play archeologist here to find the bolts. So I'm just gonna, you know, stab around. You know, just drain the oil. Throw a filter on it. Should be good to go, I bet. Oh, that's a really not good sign. Oh no. Oh my god, it's it's literally mud. I it's been underwater. A lot. And we'll just put these custom body mounts in here. Use your head to support it, just, you know, just the way God intended. Just hose it down with this simple green. Oh, it smells delicious. <laughs> Boom, Van Sickle, tractor and something enamel. Eight parts paint, one part this, and then just kind of, you know, a little of that and you're good. It turned out real good. I mean, look at that gloss. That hardener in the tractor paint just makes a huge difference. You're walking by like, what is that? But then you see under that hood, it's like, wow, that's cool. But this engine, I'm gonna start cleaning up and, you know, prettyifying it. I think we'll probably just brush paint these floors because we want it to be a nice, you know, thick coating down there because it's uh, not going to get carpet. Well, you really don't want to, you know, make it look good. We just want it to look. Kind of dying down in some places, but that's good. We didn't want it to be real shiny. Grab your oven cleaner, and I've already started on it a little. But just hose her down. It burns. 
and it takes years off your life. But is it worth saving a couple of dollars? Yes. We're just gonna spray bomb it with what I got left in here. Uh, it's a 69 400 low compression engine, nothing special. Before I put it in my Le Mans, I put a Summit 2800 cam in it, uh, double roller timing chain, hard push rods, just the basic stuff to make that work, wake it up a little bit. Anyway, it ran. It had some pretty good blow by uh, when I pulled it. Give her kind of a light coat first. Well, there you have it. One freshly rebuilt engine right there. Get yourself a pop can and just cut the square, a square out of the side of it like so and then glue that sucker over that I always put the Mountain Dew side out because that's classy there's no such thing as a flat surface after 50 years so anytime you are torquing down an intake cylinder head always start from the middle work your way out that is a old school intake look at that thing Hello! That's gonna run horrible on this engine. Doesn't move. Keep on it until maybe something happens. Oh. Oh, God, there it is. Oh. oh, those are pieces. Oh, it's not a posse either. Mmm. Very, very bad happened to this. <coughs> Be gone! Now I do things the old school way, which is, you know, do little to no research beforehand. Oh, man, it was moving. Oh, oh my God. Wow. This was in the car, as evidenced by the multiple bullet holes all over it. We could just slice it, like right here, and then slice this one. Like right there. Did you know, keep that aesthetic. Just kind of bracing it together like that. And we'll just squirt it all black and you never know. Just take a look at that. Oh, God. Yeah, that's not straight. So it's time to find a way around that. Oh, no. This is... That's what you like to see. probably help if I hooked up the brake pedal. All right, take two. See the bubbles? There we go. It looks real nice. Whoever ran this last, they wanted every penny out of those brake pads. You can't feel this like I can, but uh, well, it's kind of like a mountain range. Uh-oh. Rusted to the spindle. That's a shame. You know, they don't make these in U.S. anymore. I hate destroying any of them because usually they're salvageable. Rebuilt everything up here. So that'll look pretty nice when it's all slapped back together. Do I throw this ingenious piece of engineering away? Look at that tight curl there. They really committed to this. We got our new Chinesium hoses, our new Chinesium calipers, our new Chinesium brake pads, our new Chinesium bearing in there somewhere. It's gonna work just fine. And this 50 year old brake line, nothing to worry about. Just if you see me on the highway, maybe keep your distance. To amaze me, the things that are just coming free on this car without a fight. There is freaking brake fluid in this. There's probably nothing wrong with this hose. How is that even possible? Done. Basically new. There's your finished brake, I think. I don't think I missed anything. I think it's time that we put the heart back in this. We're gonna reuse the original one. Well, there you have it. I now pronounce you engine and trans. You may now hopefully survive. Took me about eight minutes and 30 seconds. Used plug wires I found laying around. Used alternator. I just rebuilt it. 
So what I'm going to do is take some of this random aluminum flashing here and we're just going to make some block off plates. Put this on my perfectly level surface here and we will just trace not around the template we made at all. I was kind of an artist, you know. That's not bad though. Kill mat which is Dynamat, but it doesn't say Dynamat, and it costs like a third as much. Slap her on up in there, and you know, that'll keep our shoes from melting. Looks pretty good. Good evening. Today we're gonna be working on this cold air intake, and as you can see, this is <laughs> near perfection. I kinda like it. <laughs> Performance induction system here with this dryer duct. Then it goes into this traffic cone that we will, that I legally acquired. The traffic cone goes in there. And we're just gonna screw the screen in, hopefully. Will this actually do anything? I think it might. And I'm just gonna guesstimate. Nearly perfection, I must say. That's pretty good, man. I don't like this angle of the beauty of this setup. It's fully adjustable. It's not the nicest looking thing in the world, but it's super functional. And I didn't have a way to put those headlights in. It's really the only reason I did this. So this is a good alternative. That's pretty easy. We'll just relocate it to the truck with our battery box. Not great. You can see it's pretty tight. We're gonna relocate the battery to the trunk of the car. Now, there's some mathematical things you can do to figure what size of wire you need. The longer the distance, the bigger the wire needs to be to maintain the same level of draw. A pair of jumper cables I got at the farm at home. So I just split them apart. I got that for 30 bucks. So $30 gets me a battery relocation kit. Grade A chicken lao mein wiring harness. And that'll work. And we can put the cable inside of the frame here. So hopefully that won't saw through the battery cable and, you know, kill us. So anyway, now he's going to run it down. And he's just going to run her down along the driver's side of that trans tunnel. Always give them a tug to make sure they don't come apart. That's what I like to call pro fish. We got our charging wire on the battery side. And then this guy's going down to the starter. We'll land our push button here. We we'll push that button, it'll bring the voltage in over to here, and then choo -choo 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 -choo. make us a toggle switch panel. So I have this piece of definitely not road sign. One, two, three, four, five, start. We got our thunder, our lightning, and our wind. So you have crank, ignition, fan. Now it makes it a real pain for the next guy, but uh, well, the next guy's me, and I hate that guy, so. We could tell by the label on this, it says power feed, that uh, I'm assuming that means power the fuse box. I didn't look at the schematic because, well, it's barely in English. Whenever I land wires, I like to throw a little bit of electrical tape over them when they're exposed like that. Just in case, you know, you're under the dash with a screwdriver and you're poking around and, you know, zap, nope. There it goes, there goes the wire, there goes your fuse. You want to play like a solid D chord on that sucker, whatever a music term is, I don't know. Pick Apart generously donates all these relays to me every time I go. It's crazy. So we're gonna go ahead and ground our relay here, and then we'll switch the relay, and then we'll get our power for the relay, and then we'll send the power to the fan. Don't go biting off the whole enchilada at once, you know? Bite off, just nibble, eat your rice a little bit, okay? Have some chips and salsa. Then, you can dig into the enchilada. Whatever, and I'm pretty sure it, it said six volt written on the box, but it's just a switch. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It might be hard for you to read, but that says Heed Light Sayich. H-E-E-D Light S-A-I-T-C-A. That's, uh... Yeah, we use this heavy wire just to give us that little extra peace of mind. You know, you might notice that I cut some corners, but I also, I follow that corner. In fact, I follow it real tight 
on certain things and that's how for to me you got to operate you know what i mean you can half-ass some stuff but when it comes to the important things you know make sure you get it right you know <laughs> you know death is bad there's better ways to go about that like a terminal block or something like that but it will work and this is kind of what i'm getting at here guys this is low buck low effort you can get this done in a few hours between lunch and dinner and it will work fine it'll work reasonably well we got our indicator light we got wind you have a brake light switch when you push the brake pedal the plunger releases and the contacts make contact the plunger is open right now push the plunger breaks the circuit oh man i gotta get in there and see that i don't want to do that Ugh. what am i gonna get into there's no trunk now there you have it you can tell that those are you know reasonably well hidden and secured are going to have you know a bowl of lao mein here literally don't just go hacking this off because you might need this later on you don't know what you're going to add you might toss a sweet eight track player in it or we've got our lower dash piece here you know it does work for you know gloves and stuff and it opens and shuts that's cool. Man, if you look like right here, it's not bad at all. Uh, and then... Here is a brand new gas tank. It came with the filler neck broken off. It's to use my all-time favorite multi-purpose tool, JB Weld. Always go overboard. Don't half-ass it now. Oh, yeah. It is the next day, and this is dried up. It seems pretty sturdy. Let there be light. And this is the point where you know things are happening. Not bad at all for homegrown. Why this will be perfect for us is that's going to give us our ground sniffer rake, you know, that every cool guy had in 1977 when this car was you know busy getting shot to death that's it this thing's gonna sit so cool and number two is an air shock we never get that lucky that one on we really got lucky there and just like that you're ready to be the coolest guy in the trailer park back in the old days before everything sucked your t for an airline fitting would just include the Schrader valve built right into it. However, now you have to cut a piece of hose and then use two of these fittings like you use on the shock to just let that dangle out there. That is incredibly stupid. I'm sure there's some engineer who got paid a lot of money for this. You know, nothing like reducing costs by adding more parts to something. No matter what you do, this is going to leak eventually. And it will be at the worst time, too. So use air shocks at your own risk. It's gonna mess you up one day. You are no doubt wondering why we are out here. This hood on this truck, not so good. It will make a mighty fine trunk floor for our GTO. Off with ya. Sketch. Already got it on? Yeah. Dang. So when you're installing your custom hood braces, you know, just pick a spot. That's good. Here's our trunk pan. Just come in from Goodmark, you know. Yes, exactly as I planned. Just like that. You got a big ass piece of sheet metal. That'll do for sure. Do it the right way. So I have this highly accurate diagram here that I yeah, I didn't measure it. Hey, hold that over there, will you? Three hundred and forty-seven thousand self-tapping screws, and that's gonna hold it, no problemo. Behold the cowboy boot, the ultimate tool. Yeah, dang, I'm gonna need a couple ibuprofen after this. No, let me know if anything sprays out of here, like bodies or something. 
Okay, do it. Anything? Nope. Anything? Now we're going fishing for crap. Oh yeah, blown out. Yeah. What in Sam Hill? Come on. Ha <laughs> <laughs> My guesstimate was almost exact. Whole equal hogged. So again, we'll put a little something around there just to, you know, keep it from cutting it in half. I like the camouflage in the trunk, but uh, it's a little hard to see that part and just dump it on the floor. There we go. And then just mop it around. That's one coat coverage right there. Good enough for me. Also, if you can't tell, it's cold! This is one of those uh, slap shifts where the shifter moves over sideways and you can slam it into gear. It's supposed to. It kind of works. Oh, I just ripped my pants. Are you. God dang it! All right, anyway, pant situation has been remedied. We're just gonna shoot some self-tappers, of course. Now we can drop the pan and see what mysteries lie within. Well, I'm feeling a little less encouraged now. What the hell is this? Is that a leaf? It is a leaf. That's good. Oh, good. Look at all the goo in here. Now just take your brake clean and, you know, rebuild it. So we're gonna pimp this trans. Oh, yeah. You know, with the rust pits, it looks like actual gold. Son of a... Come, pick. Come here, you. This car probably hasn't had this done in quite a while. <laughs> Try it. alive. This old Pontiac's got more to give. It's alive! Look how clean that is. It's like new. Glug, 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 glug. Pro tip, if your car has worn oil rings, just use gear lube instead. Now we'll give her a wipe down, and then... Now that is one 70s street machined rear end. We'll throw that up under the dash. We could pop old Whalen in there and yeehaw! I don't much care for no communist measurement systems. Who broke my screwdriver? Me. Just use your head to support it. It's only really sharp and full of disease. You can start to smell what I am cooking. We can start pounding all this out. Plainly see that something's not right. This is about as good as I think I can make it. And, uh, you know, if you're an actual body man, I suggest you skip ahead, probably. Let's get to it.
and use the edge of that 4x4 to start making a body line. Notice how I say a body line, not the body line. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't think they make shims big enough for this. Possibly go wrong here. I want to stretch that out, right? So I just grabbed this ratchet strap and, you know, attached it to that very weak point of that winch. You can see it's been, you know, used as a trampoline a few times. You don't want to bust out the windshield when you're doing this. Oh hell, it's gone! Well, after calling in the big guns, I had to have my dad come out and help me. We cut about an inch out of this fender to make it fit. There just wasn't really any other option. Well, it's time to install our new anodized gold rear end cover in a camp. Instant street cred. The popular thing to do these days is to wear your political opinions on your sleeve. I just picked this up. I don't really tell everybody just where I stand on things, you know? Nice. Let's start with a little fog. got her set up like she'd be installed on the vehicle in this undisclosed location. When we are installing the replica bullet holes, you know, it looks natural. Well, you see our drill bit we used was a little bit larger of a drill bit. Well, we know the car was underwater. Obviously, what we need to do is submerge the truck lid underwater. So, there's really only one way to go about that. Uh -oh. yeah! so you can see the aging process, you know, just naturally occurring as we speak. Yeah. It floats. Well, we got us a big one, I reckon. Oh, Lordy! Oh, easy as a fighter! Here I... Come on! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Nearly indistinguishable, if I might say. Attitude adjustment incoming. It's got a little bit of that tension fit. Well, let's toss these bad boys on here. Oh, oh. oh that's beautiful. Now we got to use our imagination a little. But man, that's the stance. We got stuff happening already. Oh my goodness. But at least it's cool looking. It's like the stars in the nighttime sky. I mean, it does pretty much do what I wanted it to do. <laughs> that door is way better. Well, I guess that's just how it is feel what's bad just by giving everything a, a wiggle. Honestly, I don't think any of this stuff needs changed, but it is all definitely factory parts. <laughs> Behold, the prehistoric impact. Save the castle nuts.
got here is the original garbage. And uh, it's fine, actually. Pickle fork died. It's a shame. I'll have to give it a proper burial tomorrow. A significant upgrade, especially. Look at this dinky little idler arm here. Compared to, you know, this freaking thing. I mean, it's twice the size. Well, it's in and assembled. Force it into place. And you just want to tighten her down until it just, just starts to compress those bushings. This time on Pullbone Garage. Dum dum. We're gonna lose the shop. Oh no. I'm so angry, I could just throw a wrench. What do you think you're doing? We have a dramatic TV show deadline to meet. And you're messing with fuzzy dice? If we don't get to World of Wheels, we're going to lose the shop! Don't you understand? Will I be able to make it to Autorama? World of Wheels, Kansas City, 2022. And that is awesome. She's back. Nothing is the right shape on this car. I don't understand it. it what I'm going to do is just shoot a couple of self tappers into this. Shocker. Love that. Probably tear it off first parking curb I hit, but. Two springs. I'm going to take out the uppers. I said. I'm going to take out the uppers first. Upper control arms deleted. Oh yeah. Somebody play lowrider, man. That's nice. Full custom right there. You don't get that on it just any automotive channel, I can tell you that. Just be able to slide this up in here. I'll hold the door shut, I'm sure. Well, that's the first 20 feet this thing's moved backwards in about 40 years. I uh, never tightened the distributor down, so, so much for our timing, but, oh well. Shaft broke. <laughs> it didn't break. 
It's gone. safe to say that the first maiden voyage was a resounding success drove this car this car drove that car drove on public streets for about a mile let's go ahead and get our tuning software up and running yep it's ready to go then back them out till it smooths out Let me go ahead and close the software program. Obviously, this is not going to be the way you want to install a window, but it's the way we are going to install a window. Set the window in and eyeball it to see where it fits. It's real bad over here. Yeah, it's real bad over here. <laughs> Dude, it fits like a glove over here, I'm telling you. <laughs> That's pretty terrible. It is what you would, might call not good. Oh yeah, you picked the rust hole. <laughs> Oh no. Huh. The only rust hole in the whole floor. Right where we need it. Nothing to do but keep going. It's talking to me. It's okay. It has good things to say. <laughs> oh! <laughs> well, I think we I think we found the point where it gave it up. <laughs> I gotta fix that now. Eh, uh, it's fine. Uh, in a move that will surprise nobody. Just gonna go ahead and use a self-tapper to, you know, screw this baby in. And this is what we call yes. I say three. Whew. I say three. You got that lower corner there. I'm asking for a lot. I am. The budget has just got. Can't. We're gonna lose the shot. Exactly what you like to see if you're a Pontiac purist is uh, the correct window installation kit you know this was offered from dealerships from 68 to 73 Well, uh, there is technically a windshield in the vehicle. What makes a good carpenter good isn't how few mistakes he makes, it's how well he hides them. You can hide a lot of this. Not all of it, mind you, but a lot of it. You know, we got the trim on here. We got the duct tape just holding it down. Ew. And uh, the trim will hold the window in. I broke the window. Down here, this is how much I care. That's just perfect. Factory correct. You'll still find some stragglers out there running yellow super stock wires. And I'm one of them. I like them. So, I'm going to show you how to make a spark plug wire. Oh. If you're anything like me, you'll screw it up four times before you get it right. I ain't trying to build the Eiffel Tower here. I'm trying to make a spark plug wire, all right? So let's not get all engineerical here. We're going to shoot on down to numero five-o here. I like to run mine behind the valve cover if I can, just to hide them a little. And there we go. They're nice and tucked in there, nice and clean. That's what you want to see. Good old barrel bolt. You know, safety factor decreased by at least 10%. Sucks to be who has to sit over here, but it'll suck even worse for me over there. At least this one works. Plus, you know, we can put a padlock in there. This is exceptionally dangerous. Don't... This... This whole deal is just bad. Don't do it. I just put the new drive shaft in, but we're not going to test it out on the road. We'll just test it in here. In our... 
professional closed course testing facility. why the posse is so important you got to lay two patches of 10 inch rubber you know well they're in there and uh, of course there's you know three bulbs out and only half of it works but Hey, whatever, you know what? It's good enough for me. Side pipes. Yeah, these are basically big old glass pack mufflers, and there's a bunch of doodads and whiz bombs and things. I don't know how any of it goes together. So, uh, it came with instructions. I don't know how to read them. JD's got the interior looking fly. Pretty good. I dig the saddle blanket. That worked out better than I could have imagined. But you figure it looks right, so just get a couple of jack stands to set it on. You know, properly calibrate your eyeballs. You don't ever learn if you don't try. I've tried a lot. Maybe this would be the time. I know that's the, probably the first time I've ever made a straight cut in my life. Will it work? It's hot. My grandma and grandpa bought them for me. I guess I am a grandma's boy. What do you got to say about it? Turns out this adapter is kind of a press fit into a flex pipe, but it worked. Is it pretty? No. Will it work? No. Yeah, that's not bad! How's it look? Craigers and side pipes. Some may call it dated. I say that's a good thing. It's time to go for a road test. We're going to button up a few things on here, throw some tools together, and uh, go hit the back roads and just cruise around for a bit. Oh, hey, power steering. This is pretty much the norm for me. I guess we pull it in and check it out. It is kind of fast. It's time for take three. Drive car without dying. All right, car. You be a good one this time, huh? Oh, we 
broke something. Threw the power steering belt off. I'm just gonna put it back on and then let's go drive again. Put a solid 10 miles on it or so, 15 maybe. On its way to a trophy for sure, the Holy Goat. never seen anything like this. <laughs> <laughs> super popular here. He drove all the way here from somewhere in Illinois. Yep. I bet nobody gets near you when you drive down the road, do they? <laughs> no. They're like, holy kind shit. Kind of a wide berth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you think about the Holy Ghost? I absolutely love it. It's even more impressive in person than it ever was on <laughs> camera. It's It really just truly I think it incredible. looks way worse in person than it does. <laughs> This is the original owner. Uh, he uh, he travels with me. All right. He was growing over here when I got the car. Ah, uh, goodbye, show car scene. deserves a second chance and uh, every car nice Porsche <laughs> this old lady was checking me out <laughs> oh, another red dang it Yeah, they snubbed us, but you know, that's okay. I didn't expect anything else. Remember to like and subscribe if you like this. 
There's more to come from this and other projects.